Yo, what's good, family? Now, if you're a viewer or even a streamer on Twitch, you probably have noticed that Twitch has been making some major changes over the last few months. Specifically, they removed the total view count from the streamer analytics. They removed the friends list. And also, they are now removing hosting coming October 3rd, for which they claim, and I quote, the experience it delivers to viewers does not match their expectations when they come to Twitch. Right. Now, if you thought that was a vague and out of touch explanation at best, trust me when I tell you, you're not alone. So today, we're gonna go over four major points that could bring about what I call a streamer renaissance where viewer, streamer, and corporate overlord alike exist in pure symbiosis. One, hosting versus rating and why they both have value. Two, why exclusivity needs to be gone for good for all streamers what? that includes affiliates and partners. Three, Twitch needs to find better ways of monetizing their platform and give better viewer and streamer incentives. And four, well, if these tips are right about bringing about a streamer renaissance, uh, yeah, you go ahead and hire me, bro. Just go ahead and send me my paycheck. Y'all can hire me. Without further ado, let's get straight into it. So the question at hand, is Twitch dying? Well, Twitch's main problem is one that stems from removing good features to prevent abuse or from seemingly being useless. Now, the problem with this method is that it does more harm than good, especially for smaller streamers like myself, as they are not replacing those features with anything at all. Now, this is huge because it's common sense or it should be common knowledge to where when you remove something, you would either want to replace it or supplement it with something, you know, as, as a replacement. You would want to replace it or supple supplement it with something. You can't just remove something that is integral to a service without replacing it. You, you literally have created a void. Viewers and streamers alike are starting to feel the effects of that void. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is hosting versus rating. Why hosting had value? So hosting had value specifically for me as a smaller streamer. So when Mixer decided to finally close, there was a point in which there was a mass migration. Before that, I had been restreaming and multi-streaming to different platforms. What that multi-streaming allowed me to do was to gain a larger viewer base overall. The unfortunate part about it is that it wasn't centralized in one location, but overall it would allow me to interact with multiple people and it would allow me to overall have a larger view account. This is kind of the same idea as casting a larger net and it was working relatively okay. Fast forward to the point to where Mixer decided to close. We then had a mass exodus of people going from Mixer to Twitch to different platforms. What that meant was is that those communities still, they, they had a desire to stick together. You know, we grew together on Mixer and we supported each other. So at the end of the day, we wanted to make sure that we continue to grow on a different platform. Also knowing that you know, we're basically all starting fresh. You know what I'm saying? We're, we, we got a clean slate. Um, and that could be seen as a good thing to have a clean slate, but it's kind of bad in, for a lot of us streamers because we're going from, in my situation, being close to being a mixer partner to now having basically 10 followers on Twitch. You know, and this was two years ago now. Thankfully, these days I have about five 500 followers and I have a, a great amount of engagement for my channel. But what really was the value of hosting is that those communities who were really greatly integrated and who really had a deep connection, what hosting allowed to happen would be that when one of those streamers, such as like when you have a stream team, you know, hosting would be effective in the sense of minus a stream team, you know what I'm saying? So basically in the event that one of those community members that you were tightly intermingled with wasn't online, if a viewer went to their page, then they would see somebody else that they know is a reputable person, not just somebody that was a random selection or a random host or a random raid. They knew that this person had value to their content. They knew that because the person that gave them the host gave them a cosign by hosting them. That was huge. Now, surely this probably was minuscule for a lot of other folks, 
and I would go as far as to argue is because they weren't using it properly. You can't just host the channel and expect that channel to then start getting viewership. You need to have a interconnected community with that audience. And what I've come to find even to this day is that a lot of people of those communities who I'm still intermingled with like that, we share around 30% of the same followers. That's huge for somebody that's hosting. If we take it on a smaller level, you, you then have three viewers out of 10, obviously. You know, you have three viewers out of 10 that would come and that, that would support your view count. As a smaller streamer who might have zero people watching, having three people show up and engage in your chat is huge. And that is the other benefit of hosting is that those people that were hosted would typically engage with the chat. And that's a big deal now with rating rating you're basically just dropping off a bunch of people into a new location if your community is intermingled with that audience that you are rating what's going to happen is is that both audiences are then going to interact with each other and they're going to chat so rating does have benefit in giving more viewership and more interconnectivity if you're just rating a random channel then rating has the exact same value or the same discrepancies that hosting had. If those communities are not intermingled, then rating suffers from the same issues that hosting suffers from. So at the end of the day, it suffers from the same problem that people are saying, or that Twitch themselves are saying that hosting suffers from. It is simple to say that hosting and rating both have negligible effect if your communities are not intermingled with the people that you are hosting or rating. Typically, whenever I get rated from a random person, it's very likely that I might get, if a person raid me with 10, 10 people watching, it's very likely that one to two or three may follow. And that ratio only scales higher once you get to times where I've been hosted by 100 and almost 200 people watching. You only get about 10 people to follow you. Why? It's not that your content isn't good. Some situations it might not be good content, but you're being hosted or you're being rated by somebody that has completely no connection to your channel. And oftentimes if the person rating you is not playing the same game as the person being rated, what happens is, is that audience is no longer interested because unless it's a same genre, a first person shooter or something like that, then it's possible they would. But if it's a complete genre switch, it's a very good chance that that audience is going to drop off because that they're not interested in that content. And that has nothing to do with you as a content creator. So that then brings me to my second point of restreaming and multi-streaming and why exclusivity needs to be gone completely. So exclusivity needs to be gone completely for the simple reason that it allows audiences to intermingle for all websites. Now, I do understand that there's going to be times where this is going to possibly infringe on Twitch's profits and it might even detract from viewership from Twitch. But from my experience of somebody who was restreaming to multiple platforms at one time, restreaming to Twitch, Mixer, and YouTube at the same time. What happens is, is that you have people who come from those other platforms who want to support your content. And so what they do is they'll sign up for Twitch and they will follow you on Twitch. What that does is that brings somebody to Twitch who potentially would have never used it in the first place. That kind of dispels the myth of them completely losing you know potential viewers or whatever it might be you know in my experience it actually brought them more viewership and it allowed the communities to intermingle and for them to learn about different platforms also from my experience people thought it was pretty cool they were pretty they were pretty ecstatic to see the fact that they could chat between twitch between mixer and between youtube they thought it was a really cool thing they just thought it was interesting. i thought it's cool too you know you have three different platforms interacting with each other you know I, I think this is what all platforms need to do and this segues into my third point twitch needs to find better ways to monetize their platform and there's several ways that they can do that so i totally understand that this you know this is a business at the end of the day they have to make profits you know they can't just make money they need to make profits to actually survive so i totally get it so instead of removing features what i think that twitch needs to do instead of removing features is they need to find better ways to monetize their platform you know basically make better ways that incentivize the viewer and the streamer to spend money on their platform so by doing that you have both streamers and viewers paying money for these incentives so that they can be discovered or so that they have an opportunity in the Twitch algorithm. One of the things that they could do to monetize their platform, bring back the spotlight feature. Now, I definitely understand that there was an abuse situation. This this was a feature where you could 
from what I understand, you could pay money or you could do something to where you could spotlight your favorite streamer. Now, unfortunately, this was abused, which is you would expect people to do this. The Internet, people are going to abuse everything on the Internet. What happened was, is that somebody was spotlighted and they used that they used that spotlight to display sexually explicit content on Twitch. Unacceptable. Totally. I get it. But instead of punishing the entire platform for one person, you need to have a stricter policy that completely bans abusers and just don't delete the incentive. That's a great incentive that allows for people who are loyal to their streamer to push them to, to the top or to push them higher, period, and just feel like that, that the viewers actually contributing to their favorite streamer or to their streamer's experience. You could add a subscription model or something to that extent to where a streamer has to pay monthly, you know, five, 10, 15 dollars a month to where they have a chance to be put into a spotlight. That would be huge. Secondly, monetize multi-streaming. Charge a subscription for multi-streaming. Don't just ban it. Don't just put an exclusivity contract on your platform that caught that that divides the platforms. Invite that. In inspire inclusivity. Isn't that what 2022 is about? Inspire inclusivity. Monetize multi-streaming through that same subscription model that I just mentioned before. If you charge $15 a month and then maybe even $30 a month for specific op for, for a specific opportunity to be able to multi-stream or restream on Twitch, I guarantee you that some people would pay it. I would pay that. Just because as somebody who's working very hard to build content on YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, and TikTok, and sometimes Instagram. Instagram doesn't seem to do much with gaming. As somebody who's working hard to build that content, I, would, I wouldn't mind being able to stream a live broadcast to all of those potential viewers because that's not going to hurt my Twitch viewership. It's only going to bring more people overall. And then on top of that, it could bring more people to Twitch as it was doing for me in the past. Thirdly, they could allow viewers specifically, not the streamer, just viewers to pay for a specific hype train that sends out an alert or something, something to that extent to where we get better push with the, with the push notifications. A lot of people have already said that the push no notifications are really atrocious. They don't really work very well. And in my experience, they don't seem to. Um, I always get them for the big streamers, but for my, for my small guys, I don't really always get them. I do get them sometimes. But I even can see that my click-through rate is very low from those push notifications. There needs to be some type of incentive to where either the viewer or the streamer or both can send out a special push notification or alert that's gonna hit every single follower it does not need to be 25%, 50% hit every single follower. And specifically for the viewer, I think the viewer should only be able to do a special hype zone or a hype train to where you can push your favorite streamer up to the Twitch carousel. And the Twitch carousel needs to move more often or something. It's, it's not very good as it currently stands. And only the first three panels, I would argue, for the, twi for the carousel is even worth it. Um, from what I can tell, the last two people on that carousel do not even get seen. You know what I'm saying? So incentivize tags. Make tags more like SEO or just a better way to discover people. Make it like a bunch of pop-ups that pop up on the home screen as soon as you come to the home screen where you can select your tags or whatever it might be. And that way you can make it fun for people to discover new streamers. Make it fun. Make it interactive. Make it creative. Make it a game. Do something just to where more streamers can get seen. And that way you have viewers who will want to interact with the website more. So the current way that the carousel works, unfortunately, the first two or three might get some views from it. But truth be told, at the end of the day, those last two to three viewers, they don't even benefit at all. So instead of having something like a carousel, why not on top of having more aggressive push alerts, also do something like a hype zone. And to discuss what that is, let me briefly discuss what Mixer was. Mixer originally launched January 5th, 2016 as Beam. August 11, 2016, it was bought by Microsoft. And May 25th, 2017, it was renamed to Mixer. It was widely known for its FTL protocol, which is known as faster than light protocol, basically just allowing there to be a less than five second delay. They claim it was less than two second delay on their platform, which I thought was amazing. I still don't understand why their business model wasn't profitable, but you know, I'm not, I don't run a streaming company. So, hey, there you go. Um, but it was integrated with Xbox for streaming, which was big because that just widens the market for streamers as well as viewers. 
However, it was shut down July 22nd, 2020, unfortunately. But what Hype Zone was on Mixer, it would have a few channels dedicated to certain games that were battle royales like PUBG or Fortnite. And essentially what would happen is when you get to the, to the top 10 finals or you get to the top 10 of that battle royale, it would find different channels that are in the top 10. So if your channel was in the top 10 and you were live streaming on you were live streaming on Mixer, as long as you had the proper integrations and all of that set up, you your channel could be featured on the hype zone. My channel personally when I streamed on Mixer was featured on the hype zone several times and I saw considerable growth from this because people are typically there for the hype. They want to have a great time and they want to see the best moments that the platform has to offer. They want to see the best moments that the platform and the game has to offer. So there's nothing better than the hype zone. So what I would suggest is that Twitch absolutely just rip off that model like call it hype zone if you got to like Mixer don't exist no more. Call it hype zone put it in place of the carousel and feature the, I don't know if it's battle or y'all what, I don't know. You guys have to come up with the, with the concepts, but make it to where the most hype people or the most hype moments of a video game can be put on that hype zone. PUBG, Fortnite being the easiest for a top 10, but maybe escape from Tarkov some type of way. I'm not sure. There's, there's ways to do it, but regardless, all this boils down to the fact that Twitch needs to find better ways to incentivize both the streamer and the viewer to spend more money on their platform. That is what it all comes down to anyway is profits. And I think with more profits, we probably would see less ads. Um, another thing that's, that's a good idea is instead of requiring us to do three minutes of ads per hour, why not cut that down by half? and then just show more ads that don't close the stream. I thought that was a brilliant idea where they were showing ads while the streamer was still able to be heard and seen by the viewer who's not subbed. I thought that was brilliant. There must not be a high click-through rate for those, which honestly the click-through rate for most things to these days is terrible. Once you're on a platform, you're typically on that platform. So that's why it's important to incentivize inclusivity between all platforms. So to wrap this up, I really do think that Twitch has a huge opportunity right now as possibly the leading streaming service still. I think Twitch has a very unique opportunity here where they can make a community that is integrated with all platforms, but it incentivizes both the streamer and the viewer to spend money on their platform. So as always guys, much love. Thank you for the support. This is the 504 Headbuster. If you don't already, follow me on Twitch tiktok instagram facebook hit the subscribe button here on youtube you guys hit that discord all of the links will be in the description below much love and i will see you guys next time peace oh yeah and twitch i didn't forget send me my check